then we went on and we said, okay, meshing, when you are actually consuming, when you're actually with multiple screens and consuming related content, what's the reason? Why are people actually doing that? So what's that behavior for those 17% people? And what you realize is that they are looking for more information on what's on TV. So the reason for going on to another screen is to get more information. To discuss what I'm watching via social media. That's also another interesting one. I mean, I've seen something on TV, I want to talk to my friends about it, and hence I get onto another screen, and whether it is through WhatsApp, whether it is on Facebook or whatever, I just want to share something interesting with people. And again, that whole idea of engagement, of driving content. When people want to talk about something, when people find something engaging, they just want to share, they want to talk to their friends about it, and that kind of drives that behavior. And again, to interact with what's happening on TV. So really interesting. Thailand is the standout market here, where more than 40% of respondents have discussed TV on social media while watching TV. Okay. I guess, I, I think from an advertiser's point of view, there's also, to follow up on a TV ad, 12% of the people are actually following up what they've seen on a TV ad on another screen. When we look at the reasons for stacking, when they are, when they are using multiple screens, but for unrelated content, it is to keep up with friends and social media, which is not TV related. So I'm watching TV, I have time, I'm going to keep also at the same time interact with my friends and social media, I'll do other things. To fill time during ad breaks, which is the other big one. Okay, I need to fill my time, I need to multitask, I have some extra time in my hand. We, are, we know we are living in a very time poor society. So again, all of this, in terms of when people are doing unrelated things, doesn't come across as a big surprise. But I guess the numbers kind of help us understand the extent to which this is happening. So, you know, how, having looked at how people are using screens, what, you know, this amount of time that they spend on screens, which is staggering because we're looking at basically 16 to 44 year olds, you know, who are using multiple screens. That is, that was the definition of our sample. 16 to 44 year olds using multiple screens should have a TV and or a laptop or a smartphone tablet. And you suddenly start to see that there are huge thing, implications of their behavior. So we're not talking about people who are working and sitting in front of a laptop all day. So what do people in this context think of multi-screen marketing? Asia-Pacific consumers, actually, when we look at it, when we talk to people in Asia-Pacific, they say that they pay this enough evidence that they actually pay greater attention to digital screen advertising. What we have seen in the ad reaction studies over the years is that we've progressively seen the Asia-Pacific consumer evolve and come closer and closer to the Western consumer in terms of their behavior and their receptivity. So when you look at their favorability across all, you would see that the average is very close to the global average, pretty much very similar. So there is a very similar level of acceptance for advertising compared to global. When we look at people who own or have access to a device, we see that the accept, we see that Asia Pacific no consumers take more notice of digital advertising compared to global there. Now, I mean, having looked at all this information, and there is a lot more, as I said, when you go into there, because you can drill down at a country level. Um, the next key thing is, what does this mean for advertisers? I mean, there's a lot of information here. How do advertisers use this? Because it is a complex world, and we are all trying to engage with this very time-poor, attention-poor consumer. So looking at, I mean, attention, from a, I guess the starting point is, and that's really important is media can be the message. Media can form part of the message. I mean, there is the message and there is a media, and I don't think they need to exist in those separate sort of silos because your brand can actually form part of that message. We've seen that earlier as well. And we've seen that consumers in Asia Pacific feel that brands which advertise on 
digital on mobile mobiles or you know when they've seen advertising on tablets they feel these brands are different they have something else to offer there is that perception of being modern or trying to engage with me differently so they are seen as setting the trends so there is that perception about advertising on media other than TV. And hence, it is important for marketers to actually take advantage of what a media can actually offer and make that media part of the message. But when we, when we go ahead and we start looking at how are marketers doing that, there are sort of what we talk about are four C's, four simple rules to as such follow. And I know there are lots of, you know, rules and there are lots of acronyms and we all are, you know, put those in place because we're trying to simplify. But when we looked at all the stuff that is there, the, the way we, which we actually get to our consumers, we took it down to four C's, starting with consistency. You know, consistency is, is it is to me, I, I look at it as sort of the biggest multi-screen opportunity because at the end of the day, you, we are trying to drive connections with consumers across multiple touch points, but we want the cons consistent, not the same, but a consistent message to come across through all these multiple touch points. And the example that I want to talk about here in terms of consistency is the Pepsi halftime example, get hyped for halftime. I'll see if it plays here. This is where we were struggling a bit. But really what you see, this was all about Pepsi. It was all about music. It was all about Bruno Mars. It kind of started, Pepsi's Get Hyped for Halftime was a successful month-long multi-screen campaign which started with this, um, which basically culminated in their sponsorship of the Super Bowl halftime show. And the campaign started with PR with an event, with a lot of PR around an event in the middle of America and then it was taken to a lot of towns in America. There were a lot of activities which continued through Jan, and there was viral videos, there were tw multiple tweets, there were wines, and the Super Bowl commercial really acted as an intro to the halftime show. There was a lot of stuff which was happening. The campaign, as I said, started with PR around a concert set in Michigan. There were activities going on. The Super Bowl commercial acted as the intro. And in the hour after the commercial ran it, it generated the largest increase in website traffic of any Super Bowl advertiser. Okay, So it is just about all these touch points really being consistent keeping it to that story which was about Pepsi, about music, about celebration, about Bruno Mars, and whatever they did, it was consistent across a lot of test points, across a month-long campaign.